Tishoni lelo kangu ane. Londengele la kumu kumzwandi le. Baka shonga. All the way from Moneni, but at the moment in time, we shall lie in Cape Town. La banyi benu ge baboni le ge ma Facebook page na social media ge sinna mula si tabesi bamba na ile si le tabesi presidenti la yona mu Professor Semelan. Ke pagas na katu begi ge na ugusi tabesi nda na mula. Nga lapti tfula ge la ge ni ge maswa tla si ven ugusi ni ugusi ni mbar. Yonga besi ngi tuko ugusi ni mumzani le mwaka shonga sbong. Mwaka buga imone ni gashle gashle. Ke paga mwaka la 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 Cape Town. We shall say in the Cape Town residents of the Missabend. We call it a corner in the morning and call it a corner sweating and sweating, it is sweating, 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 bamboo, and sugar and jab. We for the Sadish in high school, Master Sangy at Kubega gave food in a different book. Kepa Gang to the corner of the corner of University of of Kwazulu Natal. So if the stabbing in the Ganamuklake, Master Ding Jomason should also stab it. Sina lady class, let's start from the circle, let's start from the summer. The class lady, you see, let's finish. The commission you put them, what is the bomb? The commission you put them, what's why political strategy and ideological develop development commission. So, he is the Lena, Lena commission. The commission you get let's see, see as the fund is a save, the fund is a fund in the Madonga, you put them. The Mikomo, the Mibans that I put them. I'm sincere. Is fundisang ang usig ng fundisang politika politika education. Namuhla ang sitlog ng sitab ng kulumang aso uta baguti. Si 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 le the democracy that we that we want. Si ini ang si put the most si ini the democracy that si fule si funa. Kapag ang sinang kafigig leyo sitaw kala ng baguti. Si Melan ang si si fat ng baguti kasi kasi ini democracy. Kapag ang kafigig la pogan kada fat fula professor si Melan ng baguti. Umban. Labanya ben bamboni lega kuma social networks is i payo yake. Ngala kun funza lega maswa tu si Professor Semelane Umban. Ayat kama lake kang mu Professor Hamilton Semelane. He is a full professor of economic history and development studies. U funza lega ya University of Toronto, Canada. Lapo kona wapo tula kona ng PhD. He has worked at the University of Southern for many years, where he held several positions such as being tutor. We are muted, comrades. Oh, I call it. I call it some sort of technology. You can't jump. Can I call it a pants? Can I call it a bingo? Can I call it a bingo? Bingo kulum. I call it a gun bingo. I call it a gun bingo. Then some bam. I'm sorry. 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 Ningum zani le mwaga shuto mwe ni kamga imone nga shega shle kepa ngle swat kepa ngukla langsha la Cape Town tinda vato kula le maven tinda vato kula le shogi ni umsebent so nda tin tin fashion jaga ngana kusi ngkam ni 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 kamga gupiga njani lang la e kamga imone ni and then gani funzela pa Salishen High Salishen Primary na Salishen High School kasi gani ngat kasi gato kusi about 2002, what I was thinking of the South Africa, the Funa Pona, Dr. Berlin Zabatu, the Funz. So, in Funzel University of Zuland, the Funzel University of Cape Town, was a good second, was a song from the University of Kwazulu, of Kwa, of Kwazulu Natal. So, my work seven, the Gamakom Racing Seven, the Ponada, a Cape Town Seven University of, 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 of Cape Town, the Poconangi Senior Lecturer at Good Department here. Yeah, let's why knowledge and 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 information stewardship. Then I said, "Benda, I say, University of Zululand, the book on a corner, go meet a corner." The table is closed. We now move to Professor, Professor, Professor Semelan. So, I'm going to see if there are any more things. I'm going to show you some more stuff. Ne, 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 leave it to say in court. Unfortunately, we have to come to neighboring countries to look for jobs because of inging a much of opportunities. Let's now, eh, 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 Makai. Na mula age, maswati le stabless go enda stabless funzi sala, stabless funzi sanga ne democracy. 
Sita of Funsong Banegas of Funsong, Professor Hamilton Semelana was the Democrats. Sit to young Banegal was the city of Funsang and the Democrats. Sit to Nuga put them. Sit to my commission, you put them all up to a political strategy and ideological development commission. Nuga is to me was the center of seven. E. Nigle, Leo Commission. The commission gave put them all in a Lefunsang and politics in Germana to see put them on Jay. The political, the political part. So we go now. My class is stable. So Obama, Joe Malelin, Jane Sibeli, stable. So Obama throughout the year. The people are stable. So this is just my topics. The people are far across the United States. So now we are stable. So we are not going to be stable. So we are going to democracy that we want. So we are going to be stable. 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 Ong, that's Ong, Mabom Guti. I have found a democracy from different angles of the social societies, the Kalanga democracy. Sitsige, as a citizen of Kulu Malapasto from the Sana Gusi, he never had a democracy. Now, Gusi at the end of the day, the Funa Gusi put them, was the Kaki Solo Gusi in a sea put them. We play democracy, let's see, let's see Funa. Logo Ganamusha got stuck to Lulam Bani, got stuck to Lulam Professor Hamilton, Hamilton Similan. Nita ukela kwa kusengi funza i umdani wake kanga ni leo basi sengi funza kwenye baswa tibiskati sabang chela wakuta ngasukulu mawe tayisho kwa ukela kwa kusengi funza kanga ni kipa yoke ya 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 professor Hamilton Zemelan kusi o professor njem professor doctor full professor of economic history and and development studies what for like it to tackle it in Billy, University of Toronto, Canada, this nothing the faculty must what the PhD. Who seven illegal university, a gang one, scassing in the seeds, Wabamba, the food cinema, the Missabindana, the Fagacas, who's Wabang tutor, the faculty in the humanities, or Pins of Fusabang Dean of the Faculty of Humanities, and the first source director of the University of Southern Consultants and Training Center. Professor Similan Negafuzi, who was a top and pro vice chancellor of the University of Swaziland, Sikashanya Nanje, the Sunan. Was a Sue Kubera, a Sua Hamburg, a Sosa E position, your woman head of department, economic history and development studies, a University of Kwazulu Natal, a Devon. Was a Sue recruit for Lapo, a woman HOD Foods, University of, of Zululand. Lapo Konag, and I'm Lapo Konasata, and I'm Konag and a Professor Similan. Mama Soba Billy Sigasa Sabinel University of Zululand. But for Lavala goes Masculum, Sevan and Gusaika. In Catetunga Zutievan. In a low in our log bov, in our foot logo shark, in our foot logo, logum tube, Momo and Gauzig looks and call it. Some Kluma Makala put them up. Was to a lapo again? Was so who joined a equal holdings at Eben, where he took the position of. Chief Operations Officer. Professor Similane is an academic, he has published over 100 book, journal, and research based reports on different aspects of the Swazi history. Professor Similane is an academic. He has a history of, 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 of Swaziland. Professor Similane so his research interest involves around issues of pertaining to political economy and and dynamics. Nguni namtas bako se kala gusu step le le luati la kumre democracy. Ose chela gusi ni democracy. Bessas of step to name, Sias Jeda Gosi. Let democracy the Funai put them on the Funila Maswat, E. Newon. Sex Bakum Gun, Calab Nigaway. Oh, you have been a little bobon gelaba Labacon, Alla Pablo, Samano, or Wolfun the Samayo issue a democracy. And Kalemo Bush on your good thing. A Divang and Mugale Gile Namewenta a small contribution 
to the whole discourse on uh, on democracy. Mokloni palo kulu, yao pinde futi mbonga lele na lebanya le ngabati la bakona. Togu shouti ngasho njeguti all protocol observed to all door. So waba e cliche lo. So the presentation I'm going to be making revolves around the history and development of democracy. We will take a worldwide uh, perspective in order for us to be able to the end of everything to contextualize Iswaziland within this larger schema of uh, universal democracy. I must mention that I'm, go I'm not going to make any claims of uh, being able to completely give you a wholesome picture of uh, the concept of democracy. First, because it is a con contested concept and also it's a subject which has been covered in many sources such as books and journals. So there is no possibility of us trying to assume that we can be able to finish everything within the time given to us. At university level, in some instances, it is a subject of several courses which the students are taken through and it may take a much longer time than actually anticipated. So we lay no claim to be to being very comprehensive, but we will make sure that we produce certain elements which we feel are crucial to the study of e democracy. As Dr. Tashonga has mentioned, what we are then going to do at the end is to conceptualize or contextualize a position demo in terms of the type of democracy uh, they want. I can assure you that in all that I'll be presenting to you today, uh, I'm going to be grounded on the facts of democracy as a concept as against perceptions I have as an individual because the rest are short, I do have my own perceptions. But for now, what I'll be doing is just to give you the picture of a democracy and thereafter uh, people can uh, ask questions and I will attempt to the best of my ability to answer those questions as efficiently as uh, I can. To begin the whole presentation, which will take the format of really trying to teach rather than an academic exposition of the whole subject of a, a democracy. If you look at a international historical development, uh, the development of the state as an institution and a political organization associated with this, the state has been accompanied by the need to adopt the government system to manage the affairs of the state. So from the time human society, especially on the political aspect, began to development, there's always been this dire need to adopt a system of governance that best helps to manage the affairs of the state. But people have decided to do different things at different times and I'm not going to hold them guilty for that because the concept we are dealing with is a very uh, dynamic concept. And as I have stated, a very contested uh, uh, concept. 
to a large extent, the political system or the governance systems countries of the world have adopted over time have been due uh, or rather based on the material conditions obtaining at that particular point in time. For instance, we are going to find that uh, such a development has been premised on the population size of the community, the environmental imperatives, the economic and material conditions, and the level of political uh, organization. So these circumstances have tended in combination, not in isolation, but in combination has promoted different communities to adopt certain systems of governance. And one of the most striking features of contemporary politics is the almost universally popularity of democracy. I don't think uh, that is contested. Uh, if you look at the history of almost all the world nations and different regions of uh, the world, democracy has emerged as a very popular concept and as a very popular form of political life for different communities. For instance, today there are very few people who do not praise democracy and claim to be Democrats themselves. If you look at different countries in the world, you may find that ridiculously, some people whom you never dream uh, you, you would never think they would be Democrats, but they would be calling themselves de Democrats. Uh, this is essentially because all these individuals seem to agree that democracy is desirable. Uh, I think I can uh, put my neck on the block to state that wherever you are in the world, democracy is desirable. People may have their visions of democracy to suit certain circumstances, but I've never seen a case whereby people seem to deny that a democracy is de desirable. Uh, why is it, for instance, that democracy is so popular. If we can attempt to bring forward explanations of uh, this case, you, you are going to find that it's a mixture of things rather than an agreement of, on what is happening. One explanation, for instance, is that many people use the word democracy in a hypocritical or deceptive way. So you are going to find many people talking about democracy, but at the same time, conceptually, they're hypocrites. They are deceptive. They do not believe in what they are talking about. So generally, you are going to find that uh, more or less most people are going to be talking about uh, democracy. The second reason, could be that followers of different ideologies have different ideas about how to achieve democracy. Irrespective of the type of the, uh, ideology people follow, they have a way of thinking how their ideology suits the concept of uh, uh, democracy. But I have, as I have said, uh, we should take note of the fact that there is a lot of hypo hypocrisy, there is a lot of deception. So you need not believe every word from any, everybody who claims to be a, a Democrat or believes in the democratic uh, idea. These people may want to promote uh, different 
types of ideologies, but they may disagree about how to do this. So while there's this general agreement, one dif difficult question is how do you achieve democracy? That's when you are going to have these different ways, some of them which are pseudoscientific and at times are not so healthy in terms of intellectual uh, uh, discourse. Therefore, e democracy remains a, a contested concept, and we need to know um, about the democratic ideal. In particular, we need to know what democracy originally meant and how it has developed over time. That is my introductory aspect of the presentation. And the next thing I want to look at now is the origins and definition of democracy. Before I get to this section and the issue of uh, definitions, I just need to uh, highlight the fact that, you see, if you engage in an issue of definitions, you are always skating on thin ice. Axio in Zaole, le comfortable all the time. It would define things because the Im immediately you start defining things, you are delving on the issue of fixation. An issue of fixation, which at times implies lack of dynamism and lack of change. So that umunfu no by funza issue yet definition yako 20 years ago. So lubona lea picture wa we create when 20 years ago, when in fact the whole concept has evolved and changed over time. While I say that, I want to emphasize that uh, we should not, not fear to engage in an exercise of definition because in most instances, it does assist us to better understand the phenomenon we are discussing at any particular point in time. So if we engage in definitions, we are therefore mainly doing it for purposes of better understanding what the concept is all about. We are not trying to fossilize the, the concept and make it static and less uh, dynamic. In terms of origin, the word uh, democracy uh, comes from a combination of the Greek noun demos, which means people, or common people. And then it combines with the verb curtain, which means to rule. And therefore, in the Greek city-states, especially the city-state of Athens, where democracy originated, what you find happening is that for them, therefore, Democracy meant specifically rule or government by the common people. And then our English version, which is democracy, also carried that meaning that if we talk about the democracy, that is in real term, we are talking about rule or government by the common people. This means people who in other words are uneducated, they are unsophisticated and they are poor. But it democracy zeroes on them and says political power lies with them and rule is by the common people. This is the case because the majority of the so-called co 
co common people made up the majority of the citizenry and democracy was identified as it is often today with majority rule and therefore an antithesis to aristocracy of what or what we can call as they said uh, during uh, those days gov government by the best democracy is an antithesis of that in fact it was a struggle against aristocratic rule a rule of the the few and instead they developed the concept to move power but that is political power to the hands of the common people who formed the, ma the majority. Democracy therefore is government by the people exercised either directly or through elected representative, representative. I must emphasize that through or through elected representative, not appointed representative. If we can I come day, up with I'm not there to make the day. I am bound with it. I don't know if I'm bound with it. I was about to fall again. I'm joking. Of uh, democracy. <laughs> If we talk of democracy, therefore, uh, it is a social condition of equality and respect for the individual within the, the, the community. The issue of definition, as I've said, is a problematic, but let's continue to delve on uh, definitions. And the ones that I've depicted above, I think, uh, is a definition that is universally accepted in the discourse on democracy. The democracy that developed from, the, or rather in the, uh, the Greek city-state of Athens has come to be referred to as classical democracy. A question that arises when we are dealing with a, a classical uh, uh, a democracy is who are the people referred to in Athenian democracy? These people were the citizens. But in saying so, we are more or less begging the, the, the questions because we can ask again who were the citizens? To be a citizen during those days, that is the days of the, demo, uh, the development of democracy, one had to be an adult, free and male. Women, resident uh, foreigners, youth and slaves were all excluded in spite of the fact that they formed the majority of the citizenry. Remember here, I'm talking about classical uh, demo democracy. It therefore appears that classical democracy as uh, uh, advocated by the Athenians was hardly democratic. This concern was even made more significant by the fact that classical democracy as practiced by the Athenians provided little, if any, protection for minority rights. Although citizens were equal before the eyes of the law, this does not mean that any citizen was free to express his opinion regardless of how unpopular 
those opinions might be. During those days in Athens, for expressing those uh, opinions, you could, for instance, find yourself banished from the city state. And that was an integral part of classical uh, a, a, a democracy. So the, the, the problem we are having here analytically, which is very important in the realization of how democracy has evolved uh, over time is that at the beginning of the development of the concept of a, a demo, democracy, really it was not each and every common citizen that was protected by the principles of, uh, demo of democracy. These are what I can call the malcontents of classical democracy. Even though the origins of democracy were very popular, this system of government was not without its critics. The general argument was that democracy was a very dangerous and unstable form of government. Foremost among the critics was the great philosopher Plateau, who was in fact a student of Socrates. And I'm, I'm sure most of you who are uh, in fact, uh, generally, song, uh, I think it's an idea of Plato and his contribution to e philosophy at Euro in Europe at that particular point in time. And some of the aspects of his philosophy uh, we, we have adopted. But he's one of the people who really was against the concept of democracy as a system of uh, governments because he felt it was very dangerous and unstable. He argued that democracy was dangerous because it puts power into the hands of ignorant and envious people. That's what he, he thought. But again, comrades here, while I'm saying this and what Plato was saying, please focus your thinking forward to see how the concept of democracy has evolved over time. Plato claimed that because these people were ignorant, the people will not know how to use political power for the, for the common good. Surprising for a philosopher. He also argued that because they were envious, they will be concerned only with their own good, which they will seek to advance by plundering those who are better off. You can see now that some of the philosophers at that particular point in time really went to a great extent to protect the interest of the few and the interest of the rich, fearing that if political power was put in the hands of the common people, then they will plunder the properties and the riches of uh, the higher classes uh, in society. But this is not surprising because when democracy developed, it was actually an attempt to confront such dynamics in society where the resources of the state were meant to benefit the few, the few where the legal system was constantly manipulated in order to protect the interest of the few and rich. That is what we get in a, the era of a classical demo, a democracy. Plato's uh, scathing attack on democracy found a discipline in his student aristocracy. Uh, I wish uh, uh, 
I would have disciples too in uh, amongst the students I have told who can propagate some of the principles I have, but uh, these should be better ones rather than the ones I'm putting forward uh, <laughs> before you. So the disciple was his student, Aristoc 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 who also developed to a great philosopher of his generation. He argued that democracy was indeed a, a dangerous system of government. And in fact, he argued that democracy was one of six governance systems of the time. These being monarchy, aristocracy, polity, tyranny, oligarchy, and democracy. And in his book, Politics, what he actually did was to try to classify these systems of governance in terms of good and bad. According to his schema, democracy was the worst along oligarchy. And surprise, surprise, according to him, but maybe I'm wrong, it's not surprise, surprise. According to him, monarchy was one of the governance systems that was perfect for the public good. While democracy, according to him, was the worst of all the systems and it went together with oligarchy and tyranny. That was his version of depression. He, his arguments for condemning democracy were in line with what Plato has had raised before him. In spite of the criticisms that have, were leveled against democracy, it has become so popular that most political ideologies claim to favor it, I mean, even today. This is the case because democracy is an ideal. If I say democracy is an ideal, this is to say that it is something towards which people aim or aspire in, in their life. In fact, it, it is like love, or rather true love, inner peace and perfect uh, performance. These are the things which inspires people to search and strive for it. So even in democracy, it's an ideal because it motivates people to search and strive for it just as we are doing today in this forum, the discourse we are creating is actually to search and strive for the ideal of democracy. In that case, but at times, this may become very difficult to find, but we should, I think we should not despair. Even long ago, ago, people did not despair. They continued to aspire for this idea. Everyone agrees that democracy is government or ruled by the people, but exactly what that means is subject to sharp disagreement. Having said that, uh, comrades, I would like to move to the subtopic of different forms of democracy. What is very important to note, as probably I alluded to at the beginning uh, of uh, the, pres the presentation, is that democracy has tended to change in terms of conceptualization from earliest times to the present moment. 
This has actually brought about a situation whereby different forms of democracy have emerged as people continued to strive for the ideal of democracy. It is a changing concept motivated by the ways of thinking of different individuals and different groups in society. From the time of its origin in the Greek city-state of Athens, the concept of democracy, therefore, has undergone some kind of metamorphosis. This does not mean that its basic tenets have changed, but simply that different variants have emerged to indicate the changing of human thinking. While the emergence of these variants can be seen as a positive evolution in human thinking, some of them can be considered to be antithesis to human development in its different forms. I'm just uh, raising a red flag there, uh, comrades, that uh, as I said before, the emergence of the different forms or pronounced forms of democracy, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is excellent thinking. Some people have evolved in these, some of the variants, which are many, and I cannot be in a position to account for, uh, for them, for all of them here but simply to justify their own privileged situations in, uh, in society. People are going to spend time to try and persuade the general public to think what they are doing is actually for the public good. But the most important thing is that we should look beyond these uh, assumptions and. Uh, perceptions which are pseudo-scientific in terms of what democracy is. Uh, the discourse and practice of democracy in the modern world has resulted in the development of three broad conceptions of democracy. Please understand me there. I'm not saying that there are only three variants or versions of democracy as I will demonstrate later. But what I am saying is that if you look at the larger scheme of things, uh, three variants have uh, emerged. These are the variants are uh, liberal democracy. Now, if we talk of liberal uh, democracy, probably we are talking about one of the concepts which has been most criticized and contested in uh, the modern era of demo uh, democracy. This is a type of democracy that stresses the rights and liberty of the individual. For liberals, democracy is certainly ruled by the people, but an essential part of this rule includes the protection of individual rights and liberties. According to this version of democracy, it is ruled by the majority of the people, but only as long as those in, in the majority do not try to deprive individuals or minorities of their basic rights. The right to speak, the right to worship freely, the right to run for public office, the right to own property are amongst the rights and liberties that liberals have generally taken to be necessary to realize the democratic 
I ideal. I'll be brief and leave it there. And then the other larger variant is social democracy. And, and ladies and, and gentlemen or comrades, when I articulate some uh, these major three branches, I would really like you to think of yourself as an individual, where do I fall? Where are you in the schema of things? Just as at the end of the day, we are going to ask ourselves, where is Putemo and the democracy it wants? Social democracy. This type of democracy has emerged as one of the main challenges to liberal democracy. From a certain a, a social democratic perspective, the key to democracy is equality, especially equal power in society and government. Social Democrats argue that liberal democracy put the poor and working class people at the mercy of the rich. And according to them, that is not acceptable. They argue that democracy is ruled by the people and such a rule requires that every person has roughly equal influence over the, the, the government. In terms of the principle of social democracy, democracy, it is not right to have a system of a government which does not allow each and every individual in society in their different capacities to influence the operations of government. That is highly undemocratic. This equal influence cannot be achieved unless steps are taken to distribute power, including economic power, in a more nearly equal fashion. This is why the main program of social democrats typically calls for redistribution of wealth to promote equality, public rather than private control of natural resources. Like liberals, the social democrats want to preserve civil liberties, but unlike the liberals, they deny that most people can be truly free or politically or engage in political compensation in a fair manner when there are still great inequalities of wealth and power in society. The third big tree is people's democracy. This is a form of democracy which embodies some uh, aspects of uh, uh, social democracy, but more anchored on the principles of uh, uh, community. The prevailing vision of the democratic ideals in this schema is that it is based or it's a type of democracy that is closer to the original Greek ideal of democracy, which was ruled by any in the interest of the common, the people. And the people's democracy, the common people are the proletariat or the working class. It is believed that democracy will not be achieved until government rules in the interest of this class. Let us just try to go through other forms of democracy and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them, but just to indicate that the, the demonstration uh, or alluding to these larger three forms does not exclude some variance that has emerged. For instance, we have direct democracy, which is what the Greeks were, 
were, were practicing under classical democracy. We do have representative democracy, which I think we are more or less all conversant with because we always claim uh, to, uh, to be practicing it one way or the other. But one question which is very interesting under representative democracy is actually who, who rules? Is it the people of those elected? Whatever the argument, maybe representation for whatever reason has become an accepted principle of democracy. But we still need to tease and interrogate this issue. It's a representative which is democratically accepted, but actually who rules? Maybe it goes to the nitty gritties of how this type of, of democracy is uh, practiced. And then another one is part participatory uh, democracy. Many people believe that democracy without the participation of the majority of the, the citizen is actually an ideal lost and an ideal not achieved. For democracy, according to uh, these uh, commentators, to be realistic, it should be anchored on the full participation of uh, the people. Here we should not create illusions as our democracies uh, in Africa and probably other parts of the world have, have subjected us to. The tendency to e equate elections to participatory democracy. Elections are simply one step within the larger picture of participatory democracy. In participatory democracy, people should be involved from the community level up to or escalating to the government level in terms of their contribution in the construction of policies and ideas of governing the state. The situation whereby you, you elect people to government and other forms of uh, uh, institutions, and immediately they, 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 they get there, they become wise men of the East. They forget you completely and only remember you when they need your vote in the next uh, election. That is a bastardization of particular participatory democracy, which makes our transition and consolidation of democracy in most countries of Africa to be a big, big illusion. You can look at examples in Southern Africa right now where the claims are on democracy. But look at the statement and pronouncement of individual people in the rural communities pertaining to participation in the governing of the state. Some of them are going to tell you, oh, we last saw this one in the last elections, but yesterday we saw him running around or driving around our community in big car, then you know it is uh, the time for the next uh, elections. If you look at the writings of C. Paterman and also those of Rousseau and Mill, who were some of the philosophers, participatory democracy fosters human development, embraces a sense of political efficacy, reduces a sense of enslavement from power centers for most communities of the world. And I think this is the ideal we should strive for.
all teach our uh, organization to strive for the ideal of participatory democracy. Next, uh, comrades, why democracy? Why should we be talking uh, about democracy? Now, now we've got, talked about different forms of democracy. What is uh, a democracy in the similarities of this world coming with postulations of uh, uh, the whole concept of uh, the why democracy? Why are we so concerned about the democ uh, democracy? Democracy is one of the most widely used or spoken words in world history. This wide usage has in, in many instances carried misuses, distortions, and misrepresentation. One of the major questions of is why democracy and answering this question should be always an attempt to disengage entangle the issue of why nations should opt for democracy. Why, for instance, was Pudemo going to pains in 1983 and in drafting the People's Manifesto concerned with the issue of bringing out the type of democracy it is aspiring uh, uh, to. My argument in this case would be that uh, if you look at any system of govern governance in the world, it affects the provision of public goods and it has been a subject of several studies. For instance, their court Diacon in 2002 showed that the provision of uh, several public goods, including secondary school enrollment, access to safe water, sanitation, uh, dramatically improves in a democracy as against in a dictatorship and other intermediate forms of government government. According to this construction, the general citizens have got a lot to gain from democracy rather than in other forms of uh, governance, especially at the level of the provision of, uh, of, uh, of uh, public goods. This and other studies have shown that uh, the monotonic relationship towards greater supply of public goods as the form of governance moves from di uh, dictatorship to democracy tends to improve. They show that the under investment in public goods is at least in part explained by governance, governance failures associated with lack or insufficient degree of uh, democratization. So one can argue, if we do not adopt democracy, then we are depriving ourselves, we are depriving our citizenry the chance to improve their quality, uh, quality of life. A positive hypothesis uh, is that the more democratic a regime is, the greater is the involvement of civil society in controlling how governments use public uh, resources. In a dictatorship, comrades, those in power have got the privilege and quote unquote assumed the right of putting their hands in the cookie jar, almost that way. It's because you are practicing a system that does not respect the aspirations of the poor, the aspirations of the majority of 
the, the population. And democracy promises, if well executed and well managed, to eradicate such injustices. When we, if we consider economic growth, especially growth rates, for countries are under different forms of government. Studies have shown that is there's a relationship between annual growth rates and the type of regime in power. In a study conducted in Latin America by Lopez, it shows that less democratic countries or dictatorships experience negative growth, annual growth rates per head. These are countries in which the degree of government of state manipulation by power groups was more acute. So if you have a system that allows power groups to manipulate the operations of the government, then you are basically killing the whole country because that will have a negative impact on the annual growth rate. This is assuming that all governments aspire a positive growth rates and preferably growth rates with a human face. And then most dictatorships have invariably failed to involve, invest in public goods, such as, as human capital, public health, education, social development, and the management of uh, the, the, the env environment. So most of these ills, I would argue, are derivatives of the system of uh, government we practice. And the ideal of democracy promises that if adopted and implemented in its generic forms, then such ills can be eliminated. Another virtue, virtue of democracy is that it is a system that on principle ensures the governing of the state on the interest of the majority of the population. You cannot change people to be slaves in their own countries. Any system of government that enslave its citizens is actually a, a governance system that does not respect the dignity of its population. A democracy goes a long way in giving an emphasis on a fair distribution of the resources of the state. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure I've bought you to quite an extent, but uh, I would like to go to my last section. And the subtitle of my last section or the last section of my presentation is Pudemo and the democracy, quote, unquote, and the democracy we want. In dealing with this question, I'm not going to produce theoretical postulations, but in order to put Pudemo in the context of the concept of democracy and what Ipudemo wants, I will anchor my presentation on the realities of uh, the organization. So I'm not going to build a theoretical uh, framework based on my perceptions, but it is demo that should tell us the democracy we want. And that this is the section I want to deal with. 
Democracy is an ideal to which everybody aspires. From the time of the formation of its formation, Pudemo has strived to reach the ideal of democracy as a governance system for Swaziland. The democratic direction of Pudemo is to be found in some of the documents that have been produced by Putemo from the time of its inception to the present. I'm not claiming that I've read all, 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 all of them, but I've read quite a number of them and they do give a picture of what type of democracy Putemo is a, a, a want as an, as an organization. This type of democracy is found in the different statements in different documents produced by the organization. The foundation of the type of democracy as, uh, that Podemo aspires is found in one of the documents titled the People's Manifesto. This document is a founding document for the organization and it stipulates the most important goals for the organization. And which I think all of us who are associated with the, the organization should be conversant with. On the type of democracy, Pudemo aspires to, the document states that the major goal of the organization is, I quote, to create a constitutional multi-party democracy, close quotes. The manifesto also states that Pudemo aspires to a country governed through a written constitution based on universal principles of multiple party democracy, end of quote. The same document states, the country's constitution shall be the supreme law of the land. This necessarily means, therefore, that the concept of a constitutional demo democracy grounded on the principles of multi-party democracy have been universally accepted as a crucial element of any democracy. And in this respect, Pudemo comes out as well-grounded on the type of democracy it's it aspires to. However, the major question is, this is a, a theoretical construction or is this a theoretical construction or something founded on the country, concrete material conditions? Our belief is that any concept based on theoretical construction faces the danger of easily evaporating, whereas that founded on existing material conditions is bound to become the DNA of the organization. Historical evidence indicates that when Pudemo was formed in 19, 1983, Swaziland had developed the unfortunate characteristic of being ruled through decree. This was a product of what became an infamous decision to conduct a coup d'etat on the independence constitution in 1973. This is generally known, I'm not creating it. It's a material condition that obtained in 1983. This was compounded by the actions of Likoko at the time 
which for all intents and purposes operated above the laws of the land, much to the victimization of the citizenry of the country. Again in 1983, when Pudemo was formed, it was the background of a, it was on the background of a country that had deteriorated to the level of an anonymous non-party state in which all political formations have been abused and mutilated. It was therefore understandable why Pudemo aspired for a constitutional multi-party democracy. To a large extent, it was to amend and change the stereotypes which have been put and developed uh, from 1983, rather 1973 up to, up, up to up to about 1983. That is the basis of Pudemo's uh, constitutional multi-party demo democracy. Other documents of Pudemo demonstrate the variant of social democracy, but maybe be before I say that, I must stipulate that we, we as a country really have undergone or have gone through a period of severe difficulties. Where what was supposed to be a written country, uh, constitution with no indications of what exactly it was, was used on a daily basis, but unfortunately to the detriment of the majority. So the material conditions for Podemo to strive or want a constitutional multi-party democracy are based on the experiences of Swaziland in the arena of governments. Other documents of Podemo demonstrate the variant of social democracy being aspired to. I must mention that social democracy, democracy can actually be a very vibrant revolutionary concept of a democracy because it is grounded on the reality